Welcome to New Life Live, the premier place to receive free advice from Christian psychologists and counselors for the mental, emotional, relational, and spiritual challenges you face. Since 1988, we've offered compassionate responses that combine God's truth with proven psychological principles to guide you toward healing. Our phone lines are open. Call us now at 1-800-229-3000. Welcome to New Life Live. We are so glad that you're with us today. Chris Williams, licensed marriage and family therapist. I have licensed professional counselor, Becky Brown. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. And I also have licensed marriage and family therapist, Mark Cameron. Hello. How's it going today? I'm doing fantastic. Good. Well, hey, Becky, I'm very, very curious. What is on your mind today? Well, who do you think you are, Chris? No. <laughs> that, that, that's literally what is on my mind. I yes. think about that question and I wonder about um, you, listener, and I think about who do you think you are and what makes up the story of your life? You know, um, there's lots of things that we do in counseling that can help people understand who they are and their identity. There are a lot of things that inform our life, everything from our heritage to our experiences to Um, our education, uh, socioeconomic impacts. There's so many things, but it's not exactly who we are, right? It's just part of our story. And I, you know, for those of you who are thinking, um, you know, I really don't know who I am. I've struggled with understanding why I think or feel or do life the way that I do. And a lot of times we can get stuck in this kind of inertia of not really having a deep, knowing of who we are, our values, our truths, Mm. what, you know, what impact we make on the world and our connections. And do you know that when we don't have a strong sense of identity, it can send us careening into all different sorts of issues. So for example, one of the things that will happen is this is where um, addictions can come into play. Now you may think, gosh, Becky, that's quite an extreme, but think about this. When we don't understand who we are, we don't understand where we come from or our wounds or our um, the things that we have struggled with and not really had tools to overcome, we tend to want to numb that out because the noise gets too big inside of our head and, and it gets to be too problematic within our relationship. So then you might do a little retail therapy or you might get into debt because you can't stop spending, thinking that my identity is in the thing that I'm buying. Mm. Or or even, you know, like what we talk about all the time is, you know, whether it is drugs or alcohol, something that literally quiets the noise inside of us. But what I want to invite you into is to get curious about those things that you don't really understand about yourself. And that may seem like a journey of a thousand miles and it might be, but guess what? you have the rest of your life to figure this out. And that's the exciting part of it. I know one time, um, you know, when I started this journey years and years ago, because I'm a little bit older than y'all, um, it was in a Bible study, actually. And I remember um, the teacher was teaching on Esther. And you know that that scene in chapter four where Mordecai is telling Esther, look, you've got to go and talk to the king. And she was just like, I, I don't even know what to think about this. Who am I to go in front of the king? And he said, but don't worry, God's, God's will will be done, but maybe this is your time to be part of that. And she, her response is, if I perish, I perish. I'm going to do it. And I think about, you know, when you think about your identity, think about the plan that God has for you. Mm. It's a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And you're going to need people along the way, but I think it's time to find out who you think you are and know that you are loved by an all-surpassing God who has a plan for your life. And uh, we can help you find that out. Absolutely. Becky, that's so important. I think about, um, you know, when we discover what I call our core identity, it's something that is immutable. It's inerrant, meaning it doesn't. It, it it has an eternal quality, and that's why our relationship with God is so crucially important, because the Creator gets to determine the identity of His creation, and it is mm. such a good thing. We're gonna take your calls right after this break. Five years ago, I had been in porn addiction 
and I'd had a sexual relationship out of marriage. Every day, men struggle with sexual integrity, impure thoughts, strip clubs, affairs, pornography. Find help today at New Life's Every Man's Battle Intensive. That was the first time I'd ever divulge the sin that I had. For over 20 years, New Life Ministries has been helping men regain their integrity and purity through their one-of-a-kind Every Man's Battle Intensive. I found a confidential comfort that was able to put a flame to a start of a healing process. Now the intensive is coming to Washington, D.C., September 20th through the 22nd. Register online at newlife.com or call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and use the discount code NLL to save $50. Thank you, New Life. You're the redeemed man. Thank you. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E and the discount code NLL. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. We are so glad that you are with us today. Another person that we are very glad that is with us today is our Club New Life member, Diane, from Culver, Indiana, who listens to us on Sirius XM. Diane, how are you doing today? Hi, guys. Uh, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. I'm always great when I can listen to y'all. I always learn so much. Oh, well, thank you. Well, tell us what's going on and how we can, how we can help you. Well, I'm, I, I'm accused by my friends of enabling my kid, uh, and I definitely used to, but I've, I've stopped, I pulled way back from that. He will be 31 at the end of this month. Uh, he lost his dad when he was 15, so I, they throw it, arrested development at me and stuff like that. He's a musician. And he's trying to build a CD and make it, uh, unfortunately, in the most expensive city in the world, New York. So he doesn't have a whole lot of money, and he, he, he's not afraid of work, but uh, he can't find uh, permanent work. So the, I'm 73, and I don't want, in 10 years, I don't want to die. And he says, look at all this money mom left me, because I have a sizable life insurance. Why, if I'd had this 10 years ago, I could have made it made it big, made my mark in the music world, et cetera. And yeah. he, he is pretty good, but I just, you know, he's he, <laughs> he was baby surprised to top all that off. But uh, so, I just don't know. I don't want to enable him, but I, I'd like to help him as much as I can. Sure, yeah. So the question for us is, how much help do you help? Uh uh, for one, I wanted to rent money, so I wrote him a check for two thousand dollars. But I don't normally, I don't pay his rent every month. Yeah, it's a horrible thing to ask for for your birthday is rent money. <laughs> well, it's listen, two thousand dollars is a really nice birthday gift for most people. So yeah, well, oh absolutely. Yeah, and he does appreciate it, and he's not afraid to work. For sure, uh, they closed. They closed where he was working, and so they dumped one hundred and fifty bartenders on the street. Yeah, so he's, he is a fill-in bartender when he can when he can find the work. For sure, for sure. So, it. so Dan, let let us jump in and let's help guide this very challenging and difficult, sometimes confusing process of how much do I help my struggling son? Yeah, and the 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 music industry it's just so hard and it can be so brutal. And you know, oftentimes people who make it they don't make it the first time. Um, you know, they, they go through many rejections, but then there's also people who don't make it mm -hmm. either. And this is the difficult part about it is you don't want to crush his dreams and say give up on it. But also at the same time, um, you want him to be realistic about where he is at in life and, and what are his own responsibilities. Now, um, we, we do learn a lot through feedback, Diane. And so if you have many friends or several friends who are saying the same thing, um, I want you to maybe be a little bit curious with them to ask them, 
you know, what exactly it is that they think you're doing. I know they're saying enabling, but ask them more questions. When you say enabling, what do you mean? What do you think I should do? And then just take it all under advisement. You know, we need other people for feedback because we all have blind spots. You know, if I have something in my teeth, I can't see that unless I have a mirror. I'm going to mm-hmm. need Chris or Becky to, to point that out to me, and, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be grateful. Um, but sometimes it, it, it is hard to get the feedback. But I'm wondering for you here, too, it sounds like there's a lot of guilt driving your thoughts and your anxiety behind this. And, and I wouldn't say that if you did die in 10 years and then he got all of this money and then he said, oh, well, if only I had this before. That really, that kind of mindset takes responsibility off of him mm-hmm. and puts responsibility for his life on you. And I would say that, that there's an opportunity of growth there then for some separation for, from between you and him. Yeah. Good point. I never thought of that. Well, and you know what I was thinking, Diane, is you don't want to live in fear. Chris was just talking about that earlier today. You know, uh, I don't know if you've had conversations with your son about what's your plan. You know, uh, I hear the story that you're living from, which is he got let go and all these bartenders don't have a job and, you know, then he needed uh, rent money for his birthday and all of those things are plausible. But in the long term, you don't want that to be the story that you tell. You want him to feel um, empowered in his own life. And so, you know, we talked about this in a previous show about, you know, as parents, and you know you're certainly out of the parenting role as far it, but you could be sucked right back into it because you're making the story that this is challenging but boy wouldn't it be incredible to have him say so i'm going to move to a, a cheaper apartment i'm going to get a job as a bartender and a waiter while i do you know the music because i've known a lot of artists too and this is what they do because they have to support their life the other part of the the life insurance thing you know what diane if you want to make an investment like a venture capitalist would i want to give you this much money to put into your career you can absolutely do that but it will be a mindful thought and the guilt won't be pushing you to do something like you know pay rent on a regular basis you know make a decision about this so that it works for both of you and uh just see what happens yeah, because I think that's really important because the thing that concerned me was what you pointed out, Mark, is that oftentimes we see difficult si- problems and we apply a terrible solution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A terrible solution is thinking that a windfall of, for instance, like the money that would come from a life insurance policy would solve his problem today. Right. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I don't know how that, how just getting a windfall would give him an opportunity into the music world. Yes, exactly. You know, that that doesn't necessarily follow. Yeah. Now, and to that point, you know, you know, Becky, you're alluding to this. Is like, really, all of us don't get out of the need and the developmental need to work through our own decisions. You know, and work through what it means to have these decisions, you know, getting into the entertainment world, whether that be acting and performing or music. These are risky ventures. Mm -hmm. I also believe that they are very, very worthwhile ventures. And and I love what you said, Becky, is that, hey, if I'm going to make an investment in this, Mm -hmm. let's make it conscious. Let's make it clear. And I also say, let's make it limited. You know, we don't need a black hole. So, Diane, you don't need to drain yourself out. And, Diane, you, as much as you want him to be successful and good, you can't make that happen for him. Mm -hmm. Right. It has to be the the public that makes him successful. No, no, not even. Well, I I would even challenge that. He. He. He's in charge of that. Now, again, whether his music takes off or not, certainly that may be completely out of his control, you know, but that's true for any artist who takes the risk on getting their creative endeavors out there. But I'm I'm concerned, too, because if 
he just defines his life as being successful by just making it in the music industry, then he may be very, very disappointed if that doesn't happen. Um, I mean, there's, you know, when you, we look in the Bible and we look, Paul had a, a, a career as a tent maker. David was a shepherd uh, prior to being a king. And so it's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that you don't believe in him to ask good questions and, and ask him about what would his backup plan be. You know, sometimes that's just prudence to be able to do that. But I think also when you're thinking about legacy here, Diane, too, you it's allowing him, I think, to have the opportunity to be stressed, you know, in a good way and mm-hmm. see if he can struggle and re- and recover. That may be the greater gift than you could give him that well, money and to buy. You know what? To that point, Diane, you mentioned that his dad died when he was 15. If he has not done the work to heal from that wound, that mm-hmm. trauma, that could also be part of what you do if you want to give to you know developing who he is and who he thinks he is like i was talking about in the opening segment yeah so and diane we see this is like tragedy does not preclude someone from being from making it in a in any industry and especially in arts and entertainment and to that point though our hearts will go out to him and to becky's point we want him to be able to get into that work and what it means for him and how that pain and loss has shaped and formed him. But I want to reiterate something because I just heard this from a client of mine who happens to be in the entertainment industry and doing really well. And as we are going back through his own history, one of the things that he said is that the best thing that my dad did for me was believe that I could do it. There you go. And 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 his dad didn't have the means to give him, uh, a, a, you know, great financial support. It just wasn't available. But what was available was belief and support. And I feel like you have been giving him that in spades. So I want to encourage you, Diane, in that way that you, you're you're giving him exactly what he needs and what you can give him. Okay, thank you. I thought maybe uh, give him an advance on part of the life insurance money or something. Uh, he has two siblings who are also rooting for him, but both of those two are established and are both older. Yeah, well, and again, helping him out, I, I think before you dip into the life insurance, I would then go back and be like, what can I do for him right now? And how would, if I'm an investor, because that's going to be his best opportunity, is that he has an investor who has stakes. That's right. really, and the, the, when we have that pressure on us, it, it creates a different motivation. And, um, and I think that that's a, a healthy motivation. So I want to really encourage you in that. And Diane, we're going to send you a copy of Doing Life with Your Adult Children um, by Jim Burns. I feel like that will also provide some really, really good guidance. And, and guys, this is a really hard topic. You know, it's like she has three kids, two are established, one is really struggling. And it's just hard to see yeah, our children you, struggle. You don't want to send the message that you don't believe in him. Of course. But uh, I think the more important message is you're loved and accepted no matter what happens. Absolutely. It, yeah. Well, I think I want to point out something because, Mark, you said something about if his Becky started the program with identity, mm-hmm. if his identity is in a successful artist, a successful musician, that's how he's defining yes. success. For and himself. maybe that's yeah. finance, you know, the clicks and downloads mm-hmm. and, and, you know, a, a recording contract and all of that sort of thing. The truth is, is many of those things are outside of his control. Mm-hmm. But here is the irony. I believe that the worst thing that could happen to him is he would find success in that way. <laughs> and if his, that's I, his mindset. If, if that's his mindset, mm-hmm. if his identity is, because it's the trap that all of us find. Mm-hmm. As I said, the, some of the hardest cases that I work with, some of the hardest situations, is when somebody has put a very, very unhealthy value on something and it worked. Because that thing is going to take him down. It happens every time. Well, and there's there's many quotes actually out there from people who are very famous yeah. who who actually say you know money, fame, uh, women, uh, you know the industry. It's not going to make you happy. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because I think of that Mike Tyson quote. It says, you know, people who say money will make you happy never had to deal with the problem of a lot of money. 
(laughs) (laughs) And so, uh, and things like that, you know, money, success, they they only fuel what's already there. But most importantly, for a guy like Diane's son, what I want him to do is stay in his creative process, stay Mm -hmm. to the source, which is the creator, and see what emerges from that as you struggle to to, to make ends meet. And those are real struggles. And we just want to cheer and encourage him on. And we want to cheer and encourage you on as you cheer and encourage us on. You know, we do what we do because of your support. Becky, you get to interact with some of our donors and supporters all of the time. What are some of the things that they tell you about the joy of partnering and financially partnering with New Life Ministries? Well, Chris, you know, we do have some incredible donors always want to invite you to be part of what God is doing through New Life. And one particular donor said, I give to New Life because in this lost and confused world, the truth and the grace is all being delivered through New Life Live. People um, hear of the show, they know that there's a safe place to call in with their questions, but they also know that they're gonna get truth, true truth, God's truth, and we're not confused about that, Yes. as well as the grace that it's gonna be okay. We're gonna find a way, we're gonna offer you different pathways to get to that freedom that we want you to experience, that transformation in your life. Absolutely. You can give at newlife.com or give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And we're going to go right back to the phones right after this break. When you give to the New Life Scholarship Fund, you're giving someone hope for a brighter future. I was kind of in the closet and, and hit with my struggle. Your donation really made the difference, especially in my situation, because... I'll end up getting laid off of my job. At the New Life Intensives, hurting people are able to begin a new path towards healing and freedom that has an effect on all of those around them. I think the people who support New Life financially are people that I'll never know. You know, I'll never be able to thank them personally for the gift that they gave to us. Their giving saved me my husband and our family from being torn apart. To help hurting people to connect to the help they need, make your gift to the scholarship fund at newlife.com or by calling 1-800-NEW-LIFE and specifying scholarships. Someone called and sponsored me to come this weekend. Whoever that is, just know that you saved a life. Literally, you saved my life. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was sort of vaguely familiar that the 12 steps had some origination in the Bible. I found life recovery. And one of the things I liked so much was that it had such a broad appeal. It wasn't limited to just alcohol or drugs, that it was addressing a a wide range of problems. At New Life, we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country. They take place online, in conference calls, and in person. And if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. We have startup materials, leader's guides, CDs, Bibles, and more, all with discounts available for groups. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and ask for Terry Ward. The 12 Steps have long been a great help to people in recovery because much of the 12 Steps' power comes from the fact that they capture principles clearly revealed in the Bible. The 12 Steps is really a pattern for all of us as Christians. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. We're so glad that you're with us. And this is September, and this is the National Recovery Month. And we want everyone to get better acquainted with recovery. And so we are hosting a Facebook Live event tomorrow, Friday, September 13th at 2 p.m. Central Time. It'll be Becky, right? Yes. And, Me and my friend Alina. And mm-hmm. Alina, who is has wisdom coming out of her ears. I mean, she just exudes <laughs> so much health and wisdom. And they'll be discussing the courage it takes to change. There is no registration needed. You just want to be able to follow the New Life Ministries with Steve Arterburn page on Facebook. If you don't have a Facebook account, no worries. You can visit newlife.com, click on the Facebook icon in the footer, and you can just connect and watch. We would love for you to be a part of that tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're gonna yeah, go, it's going to be fun. Yeah, we're going to go right back to the phones. We're going to go to Barbara in New 
Carlton, Maryland, listening on WAVA, our WAVA partner. And uh, Barbara, talk to us. What's going on today? Hi there. Um, wow, I needed to be listening today. So many things that you guys have said fit right in with where I am and, and why I called. Um, didn't even realize it when I when I picked up the phone and called that you all would be speaking into me. Um, I have I live with my forty seven year old son who came to who I brought to live with me, rescuing um, him, and it's been what ten years now. And while he while he's been with me, I realized that I had so much that I needed. Well, I needed to deal with with me, mm, yeah. um, guilt and shame and rescuing and enabling and all the things, all because of the past. Yeah. And I backed up and learned to deal with me. That's so great work. Finally, <clears throat> I have. Um, and and what what stepped me forward was the Lord in Deuteronomy saying, not just have courage, but he will go before me. Mm, and yeah. that helped me step off. So now, the things that my son has been accusing me of, the things that he's questioning, things that I've backed off, I have a lot of, lot of crap, and I've allowed it. Can't say, can't blame him, <clears throat> I allowed it. Mm -hmm. But now I am ready to step forward, and I finally realize that my son needs to go. Okay, My yeah. son won't grow sitting in my house, and all the things that I've heard you guys saying about things that his dad said to him, telling him what he, that he wouldn't make it in life. Mm, uh, his yeah. dad's dead now, so he can't. He can't beat up his dad, so I've become his for sure. beat, up, beat up person. For sure. And so, and and so, so Barbara, when I'm listening to all that, but my question is, now that I finally want to step forward, and I'm saying to him, okay, let's talk. Here is everything. Let's sit down. Now he's running. Mm. He won't sit and talk. So yeah. finally I decided maybe I need to put it in writing. Sure. So my question is, would it be horrible to put in writing all the things that he's been accusing, just 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 show him all the evidence that he refused to look at, and to also let him know that it's time for him to go. Would that be terrible to, since he won't sit down with me? Well, well, yeah. Let let put it in writing. Yeah, Barbara, let us jump into that. So, Becky, what do you think? Well, Barbara, I think there's a bigger conversation. My, my one question I have, is he working, Barbara, is he contributing to the household uh, expenses and such? He is not contributing to the household. I've never demanded that he contribute. And now when I finally did, you know, ask about him, not, not even putting money forward, but just doing more, that I, I that's just been a, a, a yeah he's re he's resisted that yeah he finally, yeah he so, finally though did get up to finally find a job he's uh, I didn't know he's been trying to find work he realized he made the comment that nobody will hire him I mean he hasn't worked for a bunch he, of yeah years. for sure so hold on. And, so let yeah let us yeah. Barbara let us jump so, into this. So Barbara, yeah. here's the thing. So it you have to it, if you haven't talked to a therapist, it would be good for you to process some of the anger that you're experiencing towards him, and some of the guilt and the shame. You've worked through some of it. You said, I would want for you to have an objective viewpoint for him. Like this isn't about you. This is about me. It's not working for you to be here anymore. And so it's time, yeah. you know, and let's just work through, like, um, by the end of whatever the date is, you're going to need to find a new place to live. And he's going to have all kinds of feelings about it. But I, the other thing I want to ask you, Barbara, are you safe? Like you said that he's been, um, you know, uh, saying all kinds of things to you. Uh, do you feel safe with him in the house? At times, when he gets really angry, I kind of 
have some fears at that moment. But instead of backing up like I used in the past, I stand forward. So I'm, um, because I'm realizing this is not about me. It's about what she needs. And okay, I well, put myself well, out there. For sure. Well, Bar- Barbara, here's what we're going to do. Okay. We're actually yeah. going to help you see how it actually is about you. And because that then gives you the power to do something about it. But obviously, we're also going to help you see what's him and that you need to let go of and allow him to work through as well. But we're going to come back to you right after this break. And we're going to keep tackling this really important relationship issue. We'll be right back. I'm addicted to oxycodone. I've been on oxycodone almost three years. Addiction affects millions of people every year. I've been on it for a long time, and I need to get off. New Life can connect you with some of the finest Christian inpatient treatment programs in the country that work with people from all backgrounds and beliefs. First it was for back pain, and I was on it for a long time. And then I currently just had shoulder surgery. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction to illegal or prescription drugs, alcohol, or dealing with an eating disorder, it's time to seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers all around the country. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Club New Life changes lives. I think I go way back to listening to New Life, learning so much from it, and then become a Club New Life member. Club New Life is a monthly giving family that helps New Life Ministries provide Christ-centered hope and counseling resources to thousands of people. You know, I'm so thankful because you know why I keep giving? Because I keep learning, and I'm so thankful for all the lives that you touch every day and the people's mm-hmm. lives. So when I get to still hear the radio show, it's just so encouraging to my heart. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, you'll make a difference in the lives lives of individuals and families with godly counsel and connection to help. And you know one reason I give? Because I feel like sometimes I'm hiding behind a counselor's couch listening to all this great information and not paying so my guilt of this great advice is alleviated by being a Club New Life member. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. And together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. We are so glad that you're with us. We're so glad that Barbara is with us. She is having a struggle with her Mm -hmm. 47-year-old non-contributing son at home and needs to move on. So, Mark, where does Barbara go from here? Yeah, Barbara, I appreciate um, how you've done your own growth work and you're able to reflect and recognize that you've rescued him, that you've enabled. And so, yeah, I mean, you're not responsible for him or his actions, but you're responsible for creating an environment that he could then Mm -hmm. go ahead and not take uh, responsibility and accountability and really grow up. I mean, you know, 47 years old, unless Mm -hmm. our parents are living with us, not the other way around, Mm -hmm. we we shouldn't be living at Mm -hmm. home. Now, you, you said this, would it be terrible to put this in writing and tell him all of the things that he's done? And so... While I understand that you're wanting to justify and show him why it's re- why it's reasonable that he leave, I, I do think putting it in writing is a good idea. If he wants to sit down with you, then that's how you're going to have to submit it to him. But like Becky was saying, I would make it about you. Uh, and you know what can be really powerful is when we actually apologize to our kids mm-hmm. and say, you know what, I owe you an apology. I realize that I did this stuff because of my insecurities. And while I know that it, it helped you out in that moment and you like it, I realize it's not been helpful. And as I'm doing my own work, I'm realizing that, you know, I've held you back. And so I am doing this mm-hmm. for me. But also, it, it, it's doing it for mm. you, too. So, so rather than just justifying mm. and telling him all these hurt things, because what we don't want is that in a few years from now, you call us and 
now he won't talk to you and that's the that's the question that you've got for us is you know i had him move out and now how do i get him to talk to me so it's about communicating boundaries in love and and i agree with becky set a date give him a timeline make it reasonable don't put it too far out in advance so he thinks well i don't have to start working on this right now but you know but but let it be reasonable. Maybe if he doesn't have a job right now, maybe you're going to set it out about three months, right? Because it takes some time to submit applications, mm-hmm. go for an interview, right? Get acceptance, do the background check and the drug screen mm-hmm. and, and then save some money to move out. And maybe you want to even think about, if you can, um, helping him out with first month's and last month's rent. You know, that way, mm-hmm. again, if he's leaving... You know, he's leaving with this gift, you know, if it's possible for you to do. And then it's on him to continue it on. But I wouldn't actually give him the cash directly. I would say I'm going to I will be willing if you can do this, willing to pay it directly to a landlord. I, that's really smart. Mm-hmm. That's really, really good. Mm-hmm. You it, want him to feel the, the confidence, though, too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Barbara, if this is all about the uh, division between the two of you and the angst and the and the just the conflict you're not going to send him off in a good way and like mark said you're going to call us in a couple of years and go hey what happened to him but i i love just planning the idea you can do this son mm-hmm. i believe in you let's see you fly mm-hmm. and i'm going to give you one more recommendation i think that you you both probably need a coach So the first thing that I want you to do is, as Mark was alluding to, I do want you to be able to write it down, but I want you to be able to write down the correct things to to really reinforce what Mark was saying. If you go in and just rebuttal all of the things that he said, it will be an unending black hole of hurt feelings. That's all it will be. Okay. Defense, 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 explanation, justification. We know that that game all too well. But if you go down, if, but if you go through this list of things that you're requiring and it's written out and it's your idea and your plan, you get the power back. Mm-hmm. And But I think you might need some coaching. Mm-hmm. It's so good, though, too, Chris, because what we want to do is vomit. We want to say, you yeah. did this and because of that, and I can't do in all of the things. And that's not life-giving. It's not, you know, and then you, you, so you throw up, you might feel better for a little bit, but you still have a mess to clean up. Yeah, absolutely. And so I love having just the structure of, um, you know, what does this look like, Barbara? You're, you don't want to do this quickly. You want to do this mm-hmm. with a do controlled right. and structured right. path. Yes. And, and I, and I think your, what? I think your son may also need a coach. I think he needs a life coach. Yeah. This mm-hmm. He is in the exact situation mm-hmm. of why life coaches are so helpful and effective. And, you know, any yeah, situation I'm... that we get into, for instance, you know, I've had to make some professional decisions. And in the middle of making some professional decisions that feel confusing and overwhelming. And so, yes, I have a council of wife's people in my life. I also consult a coach to help me get through these and work through it to provide much greater wisdom than I have within myself. And and, and the last yeah. thing I'd add here, Barbara, I think that's a really good wisdom that's uh, Chris is saying is, is have someone help you coach you shape the letter so mm-hmm. it, it, it is done loving you've got a second person looking at it don't tell him things that he already should know to do don't say you need to go out and get a job like he knows that right if he's going to go and make it on his own um, he knows that he's going to have to get a job he's going to have to figure that out so so take that responsibility off yourself that again because you don't want to be in the parent uh, young child role, right? Uh-huh. You want to be in the mm-hmm. parent, adult, son, daughter role because there's a difference between saying I have an adult yes. child and I have an adult son or daughter. They're no longer a child. Mm-hmm. He's an adult here and you want to come alongside him like a peer. Absolutely. That's so good. Well, Barbara, we're so glad that you called us today. We are also going to send you a copy of Jim Burns' book, Doing Life with Your Adult Children. One of the lines I like to give to people who, I, no matter how much advice or encouragement or help I give them, it doesn't ever seem to work, is that this line, I am out of ideas on how you can fix your life. 
that. <laughs> and so, so I'm going to turn that back over to you, and I'm going to trust and encourage and believe that you have it in you and the resources around you for the right ideas to fix your life. What, what I like to say is, huh, that sounds really hard. What are you going to do? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Put it back but on But you know, but even what you just said, though, Chris, is a reminder to us. We are not going to fix anybody. We mm-hmm. learn, we get that taught out of us in counselor education, but we have to remind ourselves all the time, we are not the fixers. We are helpers, but we're not fixers. And making any progress in our life, as scary or overwhelming as it can be, always takes action. It just take, requires us to do something. And that is where our Courage to Change online conference comes in. It's going to be October 5th. And... You, if you are struggling with moving forward in your life in a particular area, if it could be an addiction, it could be a pattern of codependency, um, sticky depression, what, whatever that is, getting into our courage to change, getting into exposure to the power of recovery is available to you. Again, that's an online conference, October 5th. It will be a phenomenal time that you will not want to miss. We're going to go back to the phones. We're going to go to Tiffany, listening in Cleveland, Ohio, on Sirius XM. Tiffany, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, tell us what's going on and how we can help you. Well, um, I'm in a situation where I'm married to someone who we've been married for over 20 years, I think. It's been a difficult marriage Um I think we didn't fully know each other beforehand, but we've tried to do our best. And um, we have one child child between us, and we're heading towards retirement. And we've struggled all this time with him having a problem with having anything in, um, maintained or fixed on our home. We bought an older home. It, it's needed a lot of work, and, you know, not much has been done since we bought the house. And he he's kind of an obstructionist anytime i try to um say let's re- we really need to redo this bathroom you know mm-hmm. everything's really old um the floor is peeling up you know the feeling the ceiling fan's not big enough and it's there's a hole around that and it's it's embarrassing for me because you know we both have good jobs we have the money so there to, there's um, there's the financial to means to make it happen right yeah but he, he won't allow it. And I've said to him, okay, how about if I get some quotes and I'll have someone come in and, you know, just get this done for us. T- Tiffany, say, can, I, no. can I ask another, is there other areas of his life that are that you see significant neglect in or avoidance of? Um, he's a good employee at his job. Um, he... I'm gonna take a wild I mean, guess. I, what, I, what, what is his eating I, habits like? normal okay okay and what does he do for fun um he's an outdoorsman he likes to hunt okay and so it seems like the house is the one thing that gets neglected but also there's a control issue at the same time yes yeah okay so we're, we're going to head to a break here. I want you to also think of this. Is there other areas of his life that you see his control issues show up? Okay. Not just the home, but it, yeah. Think about that at the break because we're going to come back. I think there's a lot more going on underneath the surface other than just what's going on in the house. It's always the thing beneath the thing, the thing beneath the floorboard. So, Tiffany, we're going to come back to you right after this. We all face days where life throws us a curveball and our routines or plans get disrupted. Things we wanted to do are forced to take a backseat to the unexpected demands of the day. If you normally listen to New Life Live on a radio station, well, you might not be able to that day. And on these hectic days when you're feeling stressed or frazzled, hearing the sound of counsel given on New Life Live is just what you need to navigate the unexpected things of life. Every time I'm troubled or I have a problem, I'll cut on new life. And there's always, always something that is said that is helpful to me. By listening, I have learned more than I can ever express about how God wants me to live. Download the New Life app for the easiest way to listen wherever you are and at a time that's convenient for you. Or watch the show on our YouTube channel. 
You can even subscribe to our podcast from your favorite podcast provider. You never have to miss a day of new life. Wherever you are, we are. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for over 34 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family, or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step towards genuine spiritual and emotional healing, call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow Call 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. I had mentioned on a previous caller with Barbara that we have, uh, that coaching is a great idea. And New Life Ministries has a national network of coaches. If coaching is, if you're dealing with a particular life issue, it's like, I just need some more wisdom in this area, check out coaching. It can be really helpful. And we can connect you with a coach. Give us a call today, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We are talking with Tiffany. And Tiffany, before the break, I asked this question, is there any other areas in your lives that you see your husband struggle with control? Um, <clears throat> I couldn't really think of anything. Um, I do see a little bit of avoidance and neglect of a couple other things. I mean, just our relationship and communication, you know, that's an avoidance issue. And I think he has another relationship that I really wish he would be working on um, that he's not. He just doesn't address it. Um, but those are kind of the only two things I could think of. Yeah. Yes. And so, Becky, you had an insight that we were talking about at the break that I think is really important. Yeah, so Tiffany, uh, woman to woman, uh, you said that you had, uh, you both have good jobs and you, you know, would offer him, you know, what if I get some quotes and he turns that down. I want to say, what keeps you from just going ahead with it? Like just, you know, picking the, the bathroom and just going for it and, you know, just making it happen. Because um, I asked him, you know, he said, don't do that. And I said, well, what if I do do that? And he said, I will tell them to get off my property. Okay. See, you're telling us a bigger story. So this isn't really about keeping the house up. It's really about his control. Um, but also, Tiffany, sometimes what happens is, um, you know, people will feel shame or guilt for not doing it right. Like, you know, if you bring somebody in the house to show them that the bathroom needs to be redone and he says, I'll mm -hmm. tell them to get off my property, it's because he's feeling shame and he's feeling guilt that he didn't do the work or he couldn't do the work. Sometimes that even happens, um, you know, on the opposite way when a husband might start to help around the house. Now, this doesn't happen all the time, but still it does happen. And the wife will feel shame or guilt because for whatever reason in her head she should be doing all of that and you know just mm -hmm. trying to identify what the expectations are and I don't hear you trying to guilt him into making this happen but you know his big reaction like that tells me that there's some shame about not being able to have the house or the home in a way that makes his wife happy you know he really um part of one thing I wanted to say is I definitely think there's an ego component to it because when we did have someone come in and do something a few years ago, you know, he was he was hanging around and saying, I, I would be doing this myself, but, you know, like right. almost like apologizing. Mm, and yeah. I, was, I said to him, you know, no one's expected to do everything. Like, it's perfect, perfectly reasonable to hire people to help maintain a home. Like, no one expects you to do this. And it's like he doesn't hear me, you know, like there's no real response to that. And um, I do think there's an insecurity, but I just, I don't understand the, the, it, the, the size of the reaction is almost like 
mean. Like, I will tell them to get off. Like, it's so right. controlling that, and it's it's so anxiety producing for me because I feel like I have no You're recourse. Stuck. Like I'm stuck. yeah. Well, and yeah. well, Tiffany. Well, and Mark, can you ask, please? Because I'm going to. What happened with his dad? That's what I want to know, right? I just want to know what kind of home did he grow up in? Did dad do that kind of stuff around the house, and then your husband can't? I mean, these are just questions that we always ask. Um, he had a great relationship with his dad. His dad passed away um, several years ago. Um, he took that hard. That was a, more than several years ago. Um, I. I think his dad did pretty good, mm-hmm. you know, taking care of their home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who, who's the re- relationship you mentioned that you want him to fix things with? Um, his daughter mm-hmm. um, from another marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, there was kind of a rift in the family. Something big happened that didn't involve us, but it caused the family mm-hmm. to kind of take sides. And um, so she's sort of on the fringe, and I've been encouraging him over the years, like, you I really think it would be a good idea for you to maybe just ask her out for lunch or dinner or something. And he just did it once and that's it, you know, and it's like his, to him, his children are precious, but yet he's not working on that relationship. It's not, he's not reaching out. Yeah. I I think you're right in there that there's a pride issue. There's an ego issue. Um, and, and usually it is connected to shame. You know, pride, pride is, is, a um, it's it's a symptom of the underlying issue of shame. I think what's happening here, when Becky was saying that I don't think um, remodeling is the issue, I know it's an important thing for you. But when people come into therapy, they usually, you know, they usually, there's a prompting event and we call it the presenting problem, right? That finally mm-hmm. pushed them over the edge and got them there. But again, that's mm-hmm. really just the symptom of all of this other stuff underneath. And so what what's underneath here really is, this inability for you to both to be able to communicate with each other. He doesn't hear you. He avoids. You feel anxious because he has this bigger reaction than what is really there. And of course, it, it's threatening. It's unsafe in a certain way. Maybe you don't feel physically unsafe. I don't know. Maybe you do. But to you don't feel like you have a voice here. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, exactly. you contribute to the household. It's your household, uh, too. You should be able to be reasonable here to say, hey, things are in disrepair. Let's fix it. If you don't want to fix it, then, you know, I want to budget some money to do that. I mean, the fact yeah. that he's saying, and and I'm sure you're on the deed of the home, the fact that he's saying, well, if they come in, I'm going to tell them to leave. I mean, that's in, it's intimidation. It, it, it is threatening yeah. here. And that is the yeah. root cause of the problem. And, and it's learning to figure that out and you know what i i like us to send you the book how we love yes and yeah. i'd like you to consider coming to our intimacy in marriage event which really is um based off of the material for how we love which talks about the different core you know every couple has what we call a core pattern a negative conflict cycle and it's driven by um attachment wounds meaning how what they learned growing up how they learned to get their needs met or deal with their needs going unmet we formed a relational style you know there's 80 years of research in this and when you put two people together who have different attachment styles it it forms a predictable core pattern and that's what's going on here and what we do in intimacy and marriage is we teach people to learn how do you sit down and have a conversation how do you learn to tolerate things that you don't like how do you learn you know these basic communication skills of validation and empathy and and going deeper underneath and rather than just sharing in thoughts and perspectives what emotions are driving their behaviors that's really where the work needs to be done and i think that's probably what's made the marriage difficult for the last 20 years yeah i think that's really really good mark because i you know i hear the same thing tiffany is that you guys are caught in a pattern that you can't get out Mm -hmm. of and the disrepaired home is the perfect uh thing to Mm -hmm. fight over and argue over but that exposes what's been happening as you've described a difficult marriage because it does sound like your husband um, not unlike many men, struggle with closeness. Mm-hmm. And I just want to give you one thing. Next time, I, I want you to reapproach this issue. Do it carefully. Mm-hmm. But when you see a big reaction, calmly, in the softest way possible, let him know that you love him, but you're curious on what is happening right now to him. What's going on inside of you that this big reaction is coming from? 
because we know that there's a pride issue. We know that there's something else underneath it all. But ultimately, I think what Mark is alluding to is really important. Not alluding, directly pointing you to is really important. I think you guys get into the book. You know, How We Love is going to be super helpful. Get to our Intimacy and in Marriage Weekend. It's gonna. It's coming up. It's Dallas in Dallas. It's gonna be October 25th, and man, the transformation that happens that weekend in marriages mm-hmm. is just so profound. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Becky, for being with us. Thank you, listener, for being with us. And tune in tomorrow. We'll be back on air. Be well. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you. But you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Thanks for watching today. We love helping people. I hope you sense that. And we know that there's always hope if you find the right resource. Now, if something we've said that somebody else applies to you, that's fantastic. That's what we're hoping for. But also, if you want to join us directly, you can call 1-800-229-3000 between 1 and 3 Eastern Time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Those are the best times to get through. And while you're here on YouTube, Check out these other videos that we've done to help people see where they could grow or a different path to take. And if you do that, would you give us a thumbs up on the video and please subscribe to this channel. There are many ways that we can help you outside of the radio program. And it's very hard for some to pick up a phone and dial 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But when you do, we put you in touch with somebody who cares about you, knows all the resources out there, and they're going to find the best for you. There is no reason to struggle alone. I hope to see you tomorrow. Hope you'll invite somebody else to come and join that maybe needs just a little bit of help along the way. I'll see you next time.